Lesson 2.5 is graphing using transformations. This slide has a summary of all of our graphing transformations. The first type that we have are translations. So that's shifting your graph up, down, left, or right. So anything that's added to the outside or the end of a function, those are going to move your graph up or down. If it's an adding, it's moving it up. It's a vertical shift, and you're going to add that value to your y-coordinates. If it's subtracting, you're going to subtract that value from the y-coordinates, which shifts it down. If it's inside, you're going to be shifting horizontally, left or right, and it's always the opposite. So if you're adding to x, then it's actually shifting it to the left, that amount. So if it's x plus c, you're going to shift to the left c. If it's x minus c, you're going to shift to the right c, because you have to undo what's being done to it. For the reflections, if you have a negative on the outside of the function, that's multiplying all your y coordinates by a negative one, so it's going to reflect you across the x-axis. And if you have a negative inside, that's multiplying all of your x coordinates by a negative one, so it's going to reflect you across the y-axis. For stretches and compressions or dilations, if you have a value on the outside that's being multiplied by something, then you're going to multiply all of your y coordinates by that amount. If a is bigger than 1, then it's going to vertically stretch it. If a is between 0 and 1, then it's going to vertically compress it. If you have something being multiplied by x, then you have to undo it. So you're going to multiply all your x coordinates by 1 over that, or the inverse of that. So if it's originally between 0 and 1, it's actually a horizontal stretch. And if it's between greater than 1, then it's a horizontal compression. For this one, we have g of x equals x minus 3 quantity squared plus 2. So whenever you're doing transformations, the idea is to start with what your parent function is and what your parent function looks like, and then what transformations are being done to it. So the parent function of this graph is whatever it would have been before any transformations have been done to it. So this would have been a y equals x squared graph, which looks like this. And then inside, we're subtracting 3 from my x's, which means we're going to undo that by shifting everything to the right 3. And then we're adding 2 on the end, so we're going to shift everything up 2. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can literally take each point and shift them right 3 and up 2. Or we can use a table method. The key thing is order of operations. So if you have any multiplication, you have to do that first before you have any translations. So translations are always last. In this case, we don't have any multiplication. There's no stretches, compressions, or reflections. So we can move straight to our translations. And then order doesn't matter. Up, down, left, or right, they don't affect each other. So if I'm going to do this graphically, I would just take each of these points and shift them right 3 and up 2. So if I'm going to take the point that's at 0, 0 and shift it right 3 and up 2, it's now going to be at 3, 2. The point that's at 1, 1, if I go right 3 and up 2, is now going to be at 4, 3. The point that's at 2, 4, if I go right 3 and up 2, is now going to be at 5, 6. And then the 9 would be off the graph, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then on the other side, the point that's at negative 1, 1, if I go right 3, and up one, up two is going to be at two, three. And then the point that's at negative two, four, if I go right three and up two is now going to be at one, six. And then I'm just going to connect my dots. And this is my transformed graph. Another option is you can use a table to help you organize your transformations. So I always start with my parent function in the middle here. So I pick some nice easy parent points. So for x I pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And then my x squared I have 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So those are my y coordinates. And then anything that I move to the right are going to be affecting my y coordinates. And I always have to do multiplication and division first before I do any adding and subtracting. And then anything that moves over here to the left is going to be affecting my x coordinates. And again, it's always multiplication, division first, um, and then anything uh, adding or subtracting afterwards. So I'm going to start with my y's. It doesn't matter the order. I always just start with my y's. And so I don't have any multiplication or division. So I'm going to go straight to my translation of up to. And so I'm going to take every single my y coordinates, and I'm just going to add 2 to them. And that vertically shifts it up 2. There's nothing else affecting my y coordinates, so I'm done with the y side. On the x side, I don't have any multiplication or division, so I'm going to do my x minus 3. But we always have to do the opposite for x's, so I'm really going to add 3 to shift it to the right. So I'm going to take all of my x coordinates, and I'm going to add 3. 
So now I've done all of my transformations. So anything that's on my furthest outside is going to be my final function. So the point that was originally at negative two, four is now at one, six. So that was this point here. The point that was originally at negative one, one is now at two, three. So that was this point here. The point that was originally at the origin is now at three, two. The point that was originally at one, one is now at four, three. And the point that was originally at two, four is now at five, six. So that matches all of the points that we already graphed. So this is just an organization tool. Either way, whichever makes more sense to you is a good way to do transformations. So here we have the function f of x equals the square root of one minus x minus three. One thing, whenever we're doing transformations and there's something that's being multiplied by x, in this case a negative one, we always need to factor that out first before we read our transformations. So I'm gonna factor out the negative one that's inside my square root here and I end up with x minus one. And then I still have that minus three outside the square root. So that makes sure that we can read off our transformations correctly. So go ahead and pause the video and write down the parent function and what transformations are being done to this graph. So factoring out this negative one helps us read our transformations a little bit better. So our parent function is y equals the square root of x. And then we're multiplying all of our x coordinates by a negative one. So that's going to be a reflection across the y axis. We're actually subtracting one. So that's going to shift us to the right one. And then we're going to subtract three outside the square root. So therefore, it's going to shift down three. So go ahead and pause the video and use your favorite method to graph this using transformations. Whenever you do your transformations, you have to make sure you do multiplication first. So in this case, we have to do the reflection across the y-axis first. So if you're doing that graphically, you're gonna take each of these points and just reflect them across the y-axis. If you're doing them in your table, I started with my parent function. I picked some nice perfect squares for x and got zero, one, two, three for y. I then multiplied all of my x's by a negative one to reflect them across the y-axis. I've now done everything that's multiplication so I can do my translations. It doesn't matter the order. Graphically, I did write one first. So I took all of my x coordinates and I added one to them. So I shifted everything to the right one. And now I can shift everything down three. So on my table, I subtracted three from all my y coordinates. On my graph, I just literally shifted everything down three. So whether you did it graphically or with the table, you end up with the same thing. If you're looking at it on the table, this middle here that is in gray, that's my parent function. And then whatever is on the furthest outside, that's my final function. So zero, zero is now at one, negative three. One, one is out now at zero, negative two. 4, 2 is now at negative 3, negative 1, and 9, 3 is now at negative 8, 0. Now we have the graph h of x equals negative 2 times the absolute value of 3x plus 3 minus 5. So go ahead and pause the video, state the parent function, describe the transformations, and then graph it using transformations. The parent function of this graph is the absolute value of x. Before I read my transformations off, I need to factor out the three that's being multiplied by x. So I end up with negative two times the absolute value of three times the quantity x plus one minus five. So now I can read off my transformations. The negative in front is multiplying all my y coordinates by a negative one, so it's gonna reflect me across the x-axis. The two in front is multiplying all my y coordinates by two, so it's gonna vertically stretch by two. The three multiplied by the x is going to multiply all my y coordinates by one third, so it's gonna horizontally compress by three. The x plus one is shifting me to the left one, and then the minus five is shifting me down five. So you could do this step by step graphically. You just have to make sure you do all of the multiplication first. So the reflection and then the stretch and the compression need to be done first before you do the translations. Once it starts to get this complicated, I think the table can be super helpful because you have so many different things going on, but it's really up to you. So on the table, I started with my parent function, again, just picking some nice easy points for x and then their y coordinates. And then I always go with my y's first, but it doesn't matter. You can multiply your y's by the negative and the two at the same time. They don't affect each other. So I just did the reflection and the stretch together. I multiplied all my y coordinates by a negative two and then I subtracted five from all of my y coordinates to shift it down five. For my x's, I have to do the three first, but when it's three x, I always do the opposite 
So I'm going to divide all my x's by 3. So I end up with negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third, 0, 1 third, 2 thirds. And now I can shift it to the left one. So I'm going to subtract 1 from everything. Um, and so my final x coordinates are negative 5 thirds, negative 4 thirds, negative 1, negative 2 thirds, and negative 1 third. So my inside here in gray, that's my parent function. The furthest on the outside is going to be my final function. So I end up with negative two, 5 thirds, negative 9, negative 4 thirds, negative 7, negative 1, negative 5, negative 2 thirds, negative 7, and negative 1 third, negative 9. So it started here. It got horizontally compressed, vertically stretched, reflected across the x-axis, and then shifted left and down. So the key thing when you're graphing with transformations is make sure you recognize what the parent function is. If there's anything multiplied by x, factor that out first. And then when you go to do your transformations, make sure you do order of operations. So anything that's multiplication or division first before you do any adding or subtracting. The period t in seconds of a simple pendulum is a function of its length l in feet, defined by the equation t equals 2 pi times the square root of l over g, where g is 32. 2 feet per second, and that's the acceleration due to gravity. So we're going to use our graphing calculator to graph t, and then you're also going to graph the functions t equals t of l plus 1, t equals t of l plus 2, and t equals t of l plus 3. So replacing l with l plus 1, l plus 2, l plus 3, and explain what happens in context, like the meaning of that in context, and then explain how changing the length l changes the period. So here I have the graph of the four functions. So the red function is the original one, the t equals 2 pi square root l over 32.2. And then each one above it is adding 1 to the length. Um, and so we can see that what we're doing is what I just said. We're actually adding 1 foot to the length every single time. So then what it's doing to the period is it's moving up in time. So that means it's taking more time. So when we add length, we're actually lengthening the period as well. So it will take longer when you have a longer pendulum. So now we want to look at what happens when we have t equals t of 2L, t of equals t of 3L and t equals t of 4L. So now we have the graphs. Again, the red one is the original, and then each one is the 2L, 3L, 4L. So if we're multiplying length by a number, we're lengthening the pendulum by a factor. And when we lengthen the pendulum by a factor, we can see that it's taking more and more time for the one period to happen. So essentially, both of these kind of show that the longer the pendulum, the longer the period's going to be. So sometimes it's hard to picture kind of what is happening when we talk about transformations in context. But you kind of have to think about what's being done and then how is it affecting your different x and y coordinates.